My family is absolutely incredible. They are the most supportive family that I could have ever asked for. They um, have always encouraged my journey through art, which is crazy, right? Uh, I remember looking, um, I remember shopping for colleges and my mom was like, what do you wanna do? What do you wanna do? And I was like, you know, I could do this, I could do this, you know, but I really love art. You know, this is, that's what I really love to do. I don't know if I wanna do it full time. I was like, I don't think I can do it full time. My mom was like, relax. She was like, if, if art is what you love to do, do it. And I thought that was extremely powerful, but I was just so grateful. Like my parents were like, okay, do art. Like, I'm not worried about if you're gonna be a struggling artist or if you'll be successful. I just want you to pursue your passion and that will come. My parents have made it very clear. They've worked very hard to make sure that we were able to make these decisions and make these choices or even have those choices. But I just have a really supportive family. They love my art and from the get, they have been the number one supporters of my business and what I do. My family has, has been the support system that I needed to give me the confidence that I needed to create. Um, they're crazy, they're loud, um, but I wouldn't trade them for the world. My name is Monique Cleveland and I am an acrylic painter. I think my family inspires me too, so just being around them and all the craziness that goes into hanging out with your family helps inspire your work, like being around my um, niece and nephews and how their kids and, and shining that beauty on kids and um, illustrating their joys and their little people problems inspires me. I think that art can inspire you anywhere you are. I am a full-time art teacher. I teach grades uh, K through 12. I graduated from North Carolina State University from the College of Design and I started looking for jobs and then I realized that after taking a job with the Boys and Girls Club that I love teaching um, and I love little people. And so I decided to go ahead, further my education, went back to school to East Carolina University and got my teaching license. So I did that and I just love it. I love little people. Like, I think they're awesome. A lesson I've learned from little people is to be brave and courageous in your art. To make what you want to make without worrying about what anybody else thinks. Just make it because you felt like it and take your time with it and showcase it to the world. I think little people don't really have that um, fear of creation. They just want to create. They want to get messy. They want to get their hands dirty. So I am excited. Um, today I'm going over to my cousin's house to check out her space and to take a look at um, the room and hopefully find out what it is that she has in mind for this new piece. Hey, Ma. Hey, Shonda. <laughs> so, the reason I asked you over here today is because we recently redid this room. Okay. We painted it. Um, Looks in great. A blue. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And we want a piece that will bring the room together. Okay. Uh, we love the pieces you've done for us in the past. Oh, thank you. You're so welcome. <laughs> And this is the wall that we're thinking about putting it on. Okay. Because it's not a very large room, but mm -hmm. we want something to bring bring in something that ties the room together. Okay. Catches people eye. Okay. Maybe make someone think a little bit. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the details that you guys envision. I notice the space. I see the beautiful colors, love the blues, love the grays. So I'm guessing you want the painting to kind of flow with that color scheme? Correct. Okay. I have a few ideas for this space. I'm thinking maybe the blues, of course. Um, maybe some flowers in here. How do you guys feel about a floral piece to go into this space? I love flowers. You do? Yes. You love flowers? As long as it's not pink or too girly, Okay. I'm all in. Okay, so you're okay with flowers as long as it's not too girly? Yes. Okay. So I have an idea here. I'm thinking that I can probably combine the masculine side of things with the blues and the grays that you might like, along with the floral, uh, maybe details that you might enjoy together. Fusing them together, how does that sound? That sounds wonderful. Okay, okay. You said free reign, so uh, how much free reign? You guys really trust me? We like really, really trust you well. Okay. You guys relax, I got you. I will make a beautiful painting for you guys. I know what you guys like. I think I have an idea of how I can remix what you guys like and fuse it together and add in a little bit of my style. So how does that sound? That sounds wonderful. I got one more request. Okay. Just put a little edge on it. A little edge. Just a little edge. Okay. So 
So I like commission work because um, it challenges me. If I just painted what I wanted to paint, I would not push myself past what I can already do. And I like the ideas because I will get boxed into a certain idea that I may like and then I might miss out on a whole world of, of ideas that I could you know, incorporate into my art. So having commissioned art gives the ideas and it gives the challenge and that makes me grow as an artist. I love shopping at Michael's because they always have a deal and they always cater to teachers, which I absolutely admire. So I go there and I usually catch a sale. I love the canvas selection that they have. I love how they have a range of quality for their canvases, but I love the range of materials they have and customer service is great. I love uh, my acrylic paint. I think they work beautifully on canvas. They are my favorite. They are fast drying, so they are my favorite. Some really great smooth bristle brushes, because I love to blend. I love for things to be nice and flat sometimes. Blending is important, but sometimes that graphic design influence that I have um, kicks in, and I want a flat color. I want a nice smooth color. You know, I want that uh, illustrative look to some of my art. So really making sure that I have the right brushes and really making sure that I have a wide range of acrylic paints that I can use. Um, I use mediums here and there if I want to thin out or thicken up uh, an acrylic paint, but for the most part, I keep it simple. So for this painting, I decided to go ahead and use both feminine and masculine aspects to kind of enhance the piece. Traditionally, I usually go ahead and paint um, African-American women and girls. Um, in the past, my business, Sugar Acrylics, was designed to provide positive representation for African-American women, children, um, and really just families to provide that positive representation in their homes. This is definitely something that I am um, getting out of my comfort zone with. Traditionally, I do paint figures and forms. However, I enjoy the process of focusing on some abstract details as far as lines and colors and enhancing that um, so that the audience or the viewer is still very attracted to the piece without having to use a person or a figure. So after talking with Dre and Shonda, I have an idea of kind of what they are looking for. Um, I definitely think that I'm going to do a fusion of um, some feminine aspects with some masculine aspects. So I'm gonna take some flowers, um, which is gonna be the feminine side, and kind of um, fuse them with these deep blues and grays. Um, I also have a few things in here that I'm gonna surprise them with them, but I think I'm gonna use the white peonies as inspiration for the picture because they kind of are a symbol of um, marriage and prosperity and love, so I think that would be a great Thing to tie in for them. I definitely love the colors, blue and green, those analogous colors with a little bit of purple. So we're gonna play a little, play around a little bit with that. And usually when I go through this process of creation, I like to do a little draft. So right here I have a little draft of what I'm gonna do, just to kind of outline where I'm headed. And then of course, I need reference photos. So I went ahead and actually printed out two different, um, Two of the same picture, but two different versions. So I have the black and white, simply for uh, that base highlight and shadow. And then I have the color version for, of course, making sure I, I grab the right colors and the right um, tints and shades of green for the um, eucalyptus and the peonies leaves. So that's where we're gonna start. We also have some few surprise details that we're gonna add in there. We're gonna add a little bit of swag in there. So I think I'm gonna incorporate um, possibly some gold chains in there to kind of spice it up a little bit. But what I'm thinking is I'll take those chains and I'm gonna kind of like drape them underneath um, this bouquet of these peonies here to kind of add a dramatic effect, but an effect that you wouldn't expect. I am a little hesitant about this piece because I am not quite used to painting abstract. Um, and I have incorporated a new technique of flowers into my piece as well, so I'm gonna be trying out some new things. So I'm definitely going to be challenging myself um, to push myself to, uh, to reach a little further for this piece, but I hope that they'll like it. 
and I hope that I'm able to address their needs as well as put in my own style and swag into their piece. So my art journey started off with, of course, designing dresses, right, because I wanted to be a fashion designer. And then when I got into college, I really fell in love with mixed media. Then I fell in love with graphics. And then I fell in love with just painting, you know, as a whole. Like, it's, it's been a process, but I really just fell in love with the therapeutic nature of painting. There is something soothing about painting with that paintbrush on, with a nice smooth acrylic paint onto a canvas. There's something so soothing to me um, that I just fell in love with it and it's what I've enjoyed the most. So right now I have just finished um, laying out the background color which is going to be this really nice uh, masculine blue that's going to go really well um, in the client's home but then I'm also going to go ahead and with my um, with another color, I'm going to go ahead and start laying out the base of these flowers. And it's okay if they blend right now with the base color because I kind of want the hues to be connected. So it's okay if the base color for these peonies is blue because that is okay. It's going to help add shadow and dimension to our peonies. So it is absolutely all right. And as that blue begins to dry, you're going to be able to layer up and add more white or add more cream to your picture. Um, as a kid, my mom has always placed art into our homes and always um, gifted me with African-American art. And I didn't realize once I left the home how much there wasn't or how low the, the demand was. So I decided to go ahead and, and make more. I'm very inspired by African-American women, women in my family, because they're very strong. The women that I'm around, like my friends and stuff. And so I take the inspiration that I see from media, pop culture, style, um, form, femininity, all of those things, and I kind of blend them all together to make um, positive representation for, for African-American women and girls. So I really wanted to make sure that I not only made art and put it in the world, but I, I helped to change it in some way or help to um, speak on something in some way, make it purposeful. I think that um, art has the ability to start really hard conversations, you know, and to inflict emotion. And I think once someone looks at a work of art and um, become vulnerable, that's where the communication opens up. That's where you can begin to relate to someone else that may be different from you. My favorite thing about this space is probably the natural light. This room is really great for natural light because it shines right in and it just illuminates everything. You know, it goes right to the easel so I'm able to paint and see clearly. And so that's kind of where I started. I used the light to guide me and then everything else was just a matter of storage space. I realized I didn't have a lot of storage space um, in my home so I was like, I'm just gonna take all of these paintings and put them up. You know, and so I've used the, the vaulted ceilings as an advantage of, of mine, and I've just been putting work up and displaying it. I do not like to give away my paintings, but I know that they are not intended to, to stay here. First of all, I don't have um, that much wall space. I have to give this work away, you know, and that's the point. I'm giving it to people to give them positive representation in their homes. Like, that's the job of what I do. Um, but yes, I do get attached. The longer the paintings are with me, the longer I get attached to them. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start to add some details on these. So I'm gonna start with the base and I'm gonna slowly build it up, you know. Painting to me kind of works in layers, so it's really important to layer it properly so that you can create the form, okay? So we're gonna start with the base color, which is gonna be obviously this beautiful green, and then we're gonna work on the shadows and then the highlights. And that's kind of how you begin to bring it up. But I always recommend that people use um, a reference photo to kind of guide them. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and add some blue and I can add it directly to the canvas because the base is still um, wet. So I can go ahead and actually blend it to make a more realistic transition of dark to light. And I'm gonna look at my reference photos and I also have one in my hand. This one's probably the one I should be using because this one is just black and white. So it's a little bit easier. And I can tell that there's dark coming from one side and then it's gonna slowly fade off. When I'm in the process of creating, um, I try not to dwell too much on perfection when I'm actually creating the art. However, I do dwell on perfection when it comes to the craft because you wanna make sure that people are buying a steady investment of your work and so you wanna make sure that the craftsmanship is as best as it can be. When it comes to creating though, I try not to box myself in to keeping with an exact design because sometimes that changes and you kind of have to let the artwork kind of, um, some um, unnatural things happen while you're creating the artwork. Mistakes are gonna happen, but you have to figure out how to roll with the punches and make something new out of those mistakes. I think when I realized um, reference photos were important. I needed to be able to see color and to see um, shadows and highlights separately because oftentimes when I'm looking at something and I'm trying to draw it, if I'm just focused on what the image looks like, I'm gonna be trying to make sense of that in my mind. If I block that out and just look at the shapes of the shadows and the highlights, then I begin to get more realistic shapes um, to come through but I've just learned through experience to do them separately. Like focus on, you know, the shadows and then the color will come. Um, but if your shadows and your highlights and your base is not right, it's not really gonna matter what color uh, you pick. If you wanted to change it, say you want the eucalyptus to be blue, you could still do that as long as you understand where the highlights and the shadows are coming from. But I need the reference photo to kind of guide me because it makes such a huge difference. A lot of times you can start painting and then your imagination will take off and you'll forget all about the skill and the proportions. So you really gotta be careful with uh, staying on track. So the photos actually keep you, keep you focused as well, which is good. So I think a tip that I would um, share with fellow artists would be to take advantage of natural light because you see more of the details of your paint that way. And it takes practice. A lot of times people are like, you know, I want to be an artist and I don't know where to start. I'm like, start making art, start drawing because it's the consistency that allows your art to grow. If you are drawing portraits and you draw one portrait a year, you're not going to grow as an artist. But if you draw one portrait every day, your skill is going to is going to excel. Um, it's really cool when I'm able to look back on a piece from 2012 and to now, and I'm able to see just how well my my skill has improved because of the consistency. So I would tell artists to use natural light to make sure that you can see all the nooks and crannies of your paintings. I would tell them to use reference photos so you get correct proportions. Stop trying to make them up in your head because that's what we typically do, and we're trying to fix all of these errors and problems after the fact. Um, and then of course, just don't be afraid to make mistakes. If you are afraid to make a mistake, you're gonna get stuck and that's where you're gonna stop. You have to be willing to push through those mistakes and trust that you're creative enough to, to wiggle your way out of it and you're skilled enough that you can figure your way out of it. My favorite part about this piece is the color. Um, I definitely love how I included repetition into this piece and I added some feminine aspects like the floral design um, into the piece as well. Dre and Shonda, I think I have the solution for you guys. Are you guys ready to see it? Yes. Yes. Are you sure? Yes. All right. One, two, and three. Oh, it's so beautiful. You guys like it? Love it. It's not too feminine. Okay. It's perfect for the wall. It's gonna, it's gonna stand out with the color of the wall. The triangles is nice in the background. It's kind no of like tribal. 
Mm -hmm. Definitely, I definitely action. wanted to add some repetition with that pattern in the background and make it move a little bit since they were flowers, but. And I love the pink and the flowers. See, baby? Yeah, that's not like pinkish. Mm. It's, it could be peach. They got, they got the uh, sugar signature on there. Absolutely, it has been signed, of course, of course. And I definitely had a little bit of room to add a little bit of flair to it. So I hope you guys like the picks as well as the gold chains with a little bit of flair. You know we I love it. it. Yes? Okay. Yes. That's, Thank you so beautiful. much. Yes. And it's going to look great in our home. We do appreciate it. Wonderful. I'm happy I can make it for you guys. It is a wonderful feeling to see um, the client love the piece. I love to see them happy and I can definitely tell in their face that they're happy with it. It fits in their home. And I think that my work was definitely a success as far as um, finishing an idea that they had um, start to finish. So I really like the success of mastering a challenge. The, the happy feeling of, I didn't give up. I didn't just quit on myself. I didn't just you know say it was too hard. Instead, I pushed through it and I overcame a challenge that maybe I was going through while I was painting it. And then the reward of someone seeing it and appreciating it makes me feel like, okay, all of that effort that I put in for the craftsmanship was worth it. All of the time that I put in was absolutely worth it. And it's being valued and it's being seen. And that is you know, a great feeling for me. It's a fulfilling uh, feeling for me.